let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Escaping Our Fallen Nature by David Piper is a compelling read. It's all about finding spirituality and serves as a guide to endure the storms of life. A metaphor that was used by the author, David Piper, is relating the fall of a tree with decayed roots to a life that doesn't thrive, repeatedly coming back to the old habits, the old nature. The scripturally based explanations in escaping our fallen nature, plus the stories about God always provides a way of escape, inspires us to acknowledge the only way of us successfully escaping our fallen nature is exchanging it for a brand new one. And the author is David Piper of Escaping Our Fallen Nature, and he's our guest on This Week in America. David, welcome to the program. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Oh, yeah. Hi, Rick, and uh, hi to everybody that's watching right now. And uh, thank you for that uh, very good introduction, Rick. Well, I'm sort of setting the table here for what you're going to talk about and how helpful this book is going to be for, for all of us as we hear about the book Escaping Our Fallen Nature. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I left that sort of blank in the beginning so you could fill it in and and give us your background. Okay. Uh, Right now I'm working for uh, full-time for Crossroads 100 Huntley Street. It's a prayer line, and I take calls from people from all across uh, Canada and the United States, even to the other parts of the world as well. And... uh, Anyways, uh, I've, I've enjoyed that ministry. I've been at it now for about 28 years. Uh, but I, but since you've asked me a little bit about myself, let me back up a little bit. Uh, uh, just a little bit of history, if, if that's okay. Please do, please do. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, anyways, I, I became a Christian when I was maybe 17 or 18 years old, not sure where I committed my life to Christ and I decided to to uh, go to Bible college and, and so on. But even prior uh, to that, uh, my life was such that one of the things, you, we, sometimes we talk about uh, chronic addictions. Well, my chronic addiction was quitting. Uh, there were lots of stuff in my life that uh, I had difficulty coping with and dealing with. And the easiest remedy to that was to quit. And uh, so that's what I did. I did a lot of quitting. And uh, may I give uh, some examples maybe? Of yes, that? please uh, do. Because one of the things oh. with the book, Escaping Our Fallen Nature, is it's very relatable. Because David uh, okay. does in the book as he's doing now, which is telling personal stories. And it's like, yeah, I, I, I understand that. Go ahead and, and give us a couple examples of, of quitting. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, I guess the first examples of my quitting was quitting school when I was in grade 10. Um, they, it was announced that there was going to be some kind of initiation. Somebody informed me what the initiation would be for us freshmen. Uh, and, uh, and I thought, oh, I, don't, I feared that. So the solution was, and this was in September at the beginning of the year, my solution was to quit school. I just quit. And then uh, a year later, I was going to, uh, I moved down to uh, Southern Ontario to stay with my grandparents. And they went to a lot of trouble to arrange for me to go to school. And again, I started grade 10. And I didn't think very highly of myself. I thought I was the worst student there. But I worked hard. I studied and then at uh, at Christmas time, uh, after the exams, uh, I thought I did terrible, and I I I didn't go back for January for, to resume my schooling. Wow. I went back to Winnipeg, and I really disappointed my my grandparents. I, I after all the work they did, so I quit. And then when I came back to Winnipeg, I I went to the Air Force. I joined the Canadian Air Force. I was only like 17 or 18 and I wasn't mature enough. Maybe I was 19. I forget. But, uh, anyways, after six weeks there, I quit. And then I came back to Winnipeg. I took, uh, several jobs and one job, I made a mistake. The remedy again, instead of facing the boss, 
I quit. I grabbed my jacket and just took off. Didn't even come back for my pay. For my pay. And uh, and then finally, uh, I got a job uh, uh, delivering telegrams for a company. And it was eight miles away from home. Dad drove me, uh, put my bicycle in the trunk of the car, and I went to the to the job. And my first day, I did not too bad. But the next day, it was raining like crazy. It was really pouring. It was in April. It was kind of snow furries. It was really cold. Oh, cold it yeah. felt cold. So I thought, I'm going to resolve this problem again by quitting. But that same night, I... Uh, got to thinking in my room and I, I'm a quitter. Why am I always quitting? And this has gotten to be such a habit. And uh, so that night by the grace of God, and it wasn't a spiritual thing at that moment. It was just, I come to my sense. I'm not going to get anywhere in life by quitting, quitting, quitting. Uh, so that night uh, I decided, you know what, I'm going to go back to work tomorrow. And when I went back to work, uh, I think uh, the dispatcher there, the, the ones that sends out the telegrams with uh, us uh, delivery boys, he just figured I had I didn't show up the day before because I was sick or something. He, de- he didn't even ask me. I just went back to work, and I had made up my mind. I'll never quit again unless I have a very good reason. And I, I took that job and I stayed at it for four years, uh, full time for one year. And then I went back to school and I, went, I started grade 10 and I completed my high school. Fantastic. And yeah, so those are examples there. Well, it's interesting because escaping our fallen nature, we've got some of the background yeah. on David as we he went through to escape his fallen nature. The The book, Escaping Our Fallen Nature, that is David's website, escapingourfallennature.com. Book available at Amazon, the publisher, booksidepress.com. We've got all of that on our website. Uh, David's got such a fascinating background, his own stories. Listening and talking with so many people as part of the Crossroads TV program, 100 Huntley Street, and hundreds of people doing that. Pastored at uh, several churches, uh, four churches in four provinces in Western Canada over an 11-year period. So he has an extensive background in understanding our fallen nature and how to overcome that. How did this turn into writing? Here's someone who really didn't like school, dropped out a number of times. Now you're a, a published author. How did you get into writing? How did this book begin for you? Well, initially, uh, writing was not a skill that I liked doing. When I was in uh, school, uh, public school and, and even high school, uh, I hated writing. Uh, I, of all my subjects, only I did only I did worse and only in one subject that was French, but otherwise English was my second worst wow. subject. I hated writing. Uh, the teacher would ask, in those days, they called it a composition. I was asked to write compositions or something like that. And I dreaded it. I, I did write, but uh, I, ne- I never figured I wrote well. And that was reflected in my poor mark in school. And so I was never a writer. I never uh, aspired to, to wanting to become a writer. But uh, anyways, uh, uh, th- that conti- uh, I, when I went to Bible school, I, I felt the call of the Lord to go into ministry after I accepted him as Savior. And I, I put that off, by the way, for four years before I finally went to Bible school. And uh, so then uh, when I got to Bible school, they, they, had a, they said they're going to uh, require us students to write essays. Uh, uh, that's part of the assignments. Uh, there will be many subjects to write on. Yes. And, uh, and the very first class that I took there was an English class on how to write an essay and how to improve your grammar. So I paid very close attention so well that I, was, I got the highest mark in that class. I got 88%. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and, uh, so I developed a little bit of skill in writing. But then, but you're wondering about how I came to write this book. I think that's part of your question. Ooh, yes. And... Uh, Okay, so anyways, uh, uh, when I was at Huntley Street, and I wasn't full-time yet. This is around 1997, and uh, I wanted, to, or I was on uh, part-time. And one Saturday afternoon, 
uh, I took a call. I said, hello, this is the prayer line, ready to pray for people. And this lady, she answered, and this is the way she said. She said, God told me that the person that is answering this phone right now is to write a book, and this book must be on salvation. And that was around 1997, and uh, I didn't know what to think of that. Uh, I knew I wasn't a writer, but why is God putting this on me to write a book? But one thing that made me pursue this was because I loved evangelism. I, I wanted, when, Before I even went to Bible school or uh, did much in my uh, late teens or early 20s, I would go to the church on Wednesday night and join the others to go out door to door to to talk to people about the Lord. And and I remember also uh, around that time, Billy Graham came to Winnipeg and had a crusade, and I signed up to be a counselor uh, in that crusade. And then following people coming to the altar, I was in the back room where the counselors were, and I helped lead people to make sure they, they knew what their commitment was, just to uh, establish them. And uh, so anyway, uh, uh, over the years then, after getting that call uh, from this lady, I thought, if I'm going to write a book, I need to know what I'm going to write about. I, I remember visiting in, in Winnipeg one time with my brother-in-law, and we went for a walk. And we were talking about salvation and uh, can a Christian lose their salvation? I thought that's quite the subject. A lot of people are confused about that. And I thought, well, that would be really for me to study and get into. And can they lose their salvation? And uh, and so uh, I studied out of the book of Hebrews, especially and and different things. And once I got, got into that, one thing I realized I needed to do as I studied Hebrews was that if I'm going to write a book, I prob I felt the Lord showing to me that I needed to show or indicate to people that they need to examine their hearts uh, to make sure that they they are born again, and uh, so that was would be part of my book. And I then afterwards I began writing a whole lot of different booklets. I wrote six or seven booklets, anywhere from fifteen to fifty pages long, and. Uh, and I did that for the purpose of improving my skill in writing. I never intended to make any of those booklets uh, the ones that the Lord had, uh, had called me to write, except the last one. Uh, the last one, I thought, well, maybe that's the book that the Lord wants me to publish. And uh, But uh, I didn't challenge anybody in the book about examining their heart. I really didn't get down to the nitty-gritty of, about their born again nature, uh, so yes. I thought, no, I'm not publishing that book. So I re rewrote again, and in 2014, I decided I want to write the book this year. I was really, really reluctant. I didn't want to write. And by the way, I should say that the only reason why I wrote, some people might find this a little bit dis uh, su surprising. Uh, you might think well, I wrote in order to reach people with the gospel. Well, that was the second most uh, important message, important reason. But the main reason why I wrote was because I was tired of feeling guilty for not writing. And, and I decided there's no way I want to continue feeling guilty for having disobeyed the Lord. Okay. I, I was convinced the Lord called me and I didn't want to be guilty any longer of disobedience. <laughs> Well, you followed through and touching so many lives. Excellent yeah. reviews for Escaping Our Fallen Nature by David Piper. That's P-I-P-E-R. The website, very simple. It's the title of the book, EscapingOurFallenNature.com. Book available wherever books are sold. And you can link on by going to our website, ThisWeekInAmerica.us. Why should someone read this book? Give us just a I, I tried in the beginning just to sort of capture the essence of escaping our fallen nature. Why should someone want to read this? How helpful will this be to them? And this book really is a little bit different, isn't it? How is this different yes. than other books that have been written on this topic? Okay, yes, I, I can answer both those questions. First of all, about how it's... Uh, um, uh, rather, I should say uh, why we, I, I writ, uh, wrote the book, why people should read it. Well, because I, it is my opinion that 
everybody knows that there is a God. Uh, I know there are some people who claim to be atheists, but deep down, everybody knows there's a God. And nobody knows for sure what's after, after life, after death, rather. And so most people want to take the view that uh, they want to be ready for heaven. And uh, nobody wants to miss heaven. They've heard of heaven. I think most people have heard of hell. Nobody wants to go there. And But uh, I'm, uh, uh, in studying the scripture and studying what Jesus taught, uh, the, the truth of the matter is that there is no hope of anybody going to heaven unless they are born again. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In fact, he went so far as to say, you must be born again. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way unto the Father, into heaven. And so, and I, and I know people want forgiveness of their sin. Uh, and uh, so, uh, since that's the desire deep down in their hearts, I know there are lots of people who have already written books, so I'm not the first to write a book about salvation, of course, but the Lord put it on my heart, and I certainly that's one of the reasons why people should want uh, to read my book, to escape their fallen nature so they can take on a new nature. And how my, part, how my book is uh, a part different from other books, and it, and it is different uh, in some ways, because a lot of the things that I say uh, are contrary to some of the traditional interpretations, traditional understandings of certain uh, biblical passages. And I'll give you a, a few examples. Yes, please. Uh, okay. Uh, for, one, for one thing, uh, in the sphere of Christianity that I grew up in, uh, it was understood that after salvation, later on came the baptism with the Holy Spirit. That's how I was taught for many years. But upon real close studying, and I did study really hard, and uh, I, I and I wrote about it in my book, I, where, where I said that Holy Spirit baptism is exactly the same as salvation. Salvation is the same as Holy Spirit baptism. But I'll leave people hanging if I don't explain it, but I don't have time to explain it, so that's the reason why... People need to read my book to get a full explanation on that. Furthermore, another thing that, uh, that's different for me is that uh, uh, the way I wrote was uh, certainly I believe in the born-again experience. Uh, but like the real birth, before there's birth, there's uh, conception. The seed has been planted, and nine months later, there's a birth. So likewise, uh, for people to become born again, there has to be the planting of the seed of the word of God into their hearts. And, uh, and uh, then that seed will grow. And what is growing is Jesus himself growing in our hearts, the Holy Spirit pointing us. And, and uh, during this growing stage, yes, we're learning about Jesus. There, it's in the conception stage. We're pregnant with the seed of the word of God. And it's growing. But salvation does not take place until we reach that point that we have committed our lives to the Lord. And, uh, and only when we make that commitment of repentance and faith in Jesus, faith in his death and resurrection, then the growing of Jesus is completed. The formation of Jesus in, our, in the womb of our hearts is completed, and then we are born born with a new nature. That's how we get the new nature. But it only comes in that way through Jesus. There is no other way. Uh, another point of that's different is that uh, there's a couple of uh, passages in the scripture, uh, just two that I want to bring attention to, is uh, the parable of the sower, and then also uh, the passage in Hebrews where it says that uh, though people, uh, there are people who have tasted of the heavenly gift, have partaken of the Holy Spirit, and yet uh, if they don't repent, if they fall away, there's no return. And a lot of people, a lot of Christians even, have taken the view that Christ this is proof that Christians could, could lose their salvation. Uh, certainly I don't agree with that. And, and the way I want to explain it just briefly right now in the parable of the sower, there are four candidates for salvation, and nobody disputes about the first uh, uh, candidate. 
uh, where the seed has been planted. But number two and number three, the number two uh, candidate, having heard the gospel, uh, after a while, it wasn't very deeply planted in their hearts, and they get easily offended, and then they fall away. Uh, number three, it's a person that does appear that they got committed to the Lord. Uh, they get involved in the church, but then they allow themselves to get distracted. And because of that destruction, they change their priorities. God's no longer a priority, and they fall away. And that's what that's what the writer to the book of Hebrews was referring to. He was referring to these people who had uh, the initial stages of the pregnancy of Jesus in them, to growing in them, but then they fell away before they were born again. And so they they were zero. And Jesus said the fourth candidate, he produced fruit. And uh, and that fruitfulness was the proof of salvation. Jesus said, we shall know them by their love one for another. By their fruits, we shall know them. And uh, there has to be fruitfulness. Jesus said that, uh, that uh, out of the belly of every believer uh, flow rivers of living water. That river of living water is the Holy Spirit producing the fruit of the Spirit. And that's the fruit that Jesus was talking about. Boy, there's... Uh, so much there and time is going by so quickly yeah. and david said okay. it right by his book there is so much there we could spend hours talking about it i know you can read I it know. at your own pace and absorb <laughs> yeah. all of this escaping our fallen nature by david piper a couple minutes left in the program by the way the book escaping our fallen nature uh, the title is his website escaping our fallen nature.com book available at amazon.com the publisher bookside all of this on our website this week in america.us yes. Uh, David, just in conclusion, in concluding here on the program, what is the takeaway? What do you hope the message is from the book uh, that people will will learn from? What is what is the takeaway for readers? Okay, well, the takeaway would be that uh, now that they've heard uh, what I had to say in this program today, a lot of people listening, I presume, and uh, there are there are people uh, getting my book and they're reading it. Uh, the takeaway is uh, explore further. At the end of my book, I even tell the people that so this is a study book. Some of the stuff I've said is very deep. Uh, please read it again so you can, you can truly catch what I'm saying in the book. And, uh, and so I, and I, I want people uh, as, as a takeaway here to realize it's really important. It's a necessity to reach, re- read the book or no, not necessary to read my book, but necessity to get right with God to make sure they know they're born again. And my book helps to explain that so that people will know what to do. I mentioned a guide to endure the storms of life. That's exactly what we're talking about with David's book, Escaping Our Fallen Nature. And David makes an excellent point. This is a book that you put in the bookshelf and you refer to from time to time as you have questions when you want to go back and and refresh. The book is there. It serves that uh, that much of a purpose. It's a job well done. Da- David, I got about 30 seconds here at the end. Are you working on another book? You've really nailed it with this one. This is really changing oh. lives. What are you working on now? Now. Well, right now I'm not exactly working on a book, uh, but I thought maybe in the future I I may indeed write on some other subjects. But most of my writing right now is uh, uh, blogs on my website. And I try to do one blog or article a month, one month, so people can keep up to date with me writing up to date uh, stuff. <laughs> Well, on, and you uh, can on my website and the the website is what escaping our fallen nature.com yes. that has all of the uh, the up-to-date blogs there it's got information on the book how you can purchase the book david time went by really too quickly hopefully we can do this again yes. thank you for being with us on the program a pleasure to have you with us Okay, thank you for interviewing me and giving me this opportunity. Thank you, Rick. You're welcome. David Piper is the author of Escaping Our Fallen Nature. His website, escapingourfallennature.com. Book at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, usual places. Also, the publisher, booksidepress.com. And, of course, all of this on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And you're listening to This Week in America. And we're back on today's program right after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. 
Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bechet, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America. Permanente. Permanente. <sighs> 